If we exclude people who are intersex, why could it be a problem to be defined as a man or as a woman? Well, it may or may not be a problem depending on what you mean by man or woman. So if you mean something very confined or restrictive in terms of what kind of behavior a person might express, what kind of sexuality they're expected to have, then if you mean it very narrowly, you're going to um, create categories that not all men or not all women comfortably fit into. So that, so that becomes then a problem for many people who exist along a, a spectrum of variability with regard to uh, gender expression as opposed to their chromosomes and to sexuality, sexual expression. So the problem is more about how humans put rules to define the masculine and the feminine. Yes, so, uh, but notice that you've switched modes of speaking by doing that because usually when we talk about a man or a woman, someone imagines you mean uh, a very specific kind of body with specific chromosomes and specific genitals. Uh, and there's an elision to what many people call gender where one is talking about expression and when we're talking about gender then we use the phrases masculine and feminine. So the problem is that masculinity does not map nicely on top of male or so the the gender and the basic biology do not necessarily match. What happened today when an intersex child is born in the US and in Europe? Well, I really don't know what happens in Europe. Okay. And so in the United States, when an intersex child is born, I'm going to say it depends on where they were born within the United States. The United States has a very heterogeneous healthcare system. And in some parts of the country, uh, intersexuality and the treatment of intersexuality has changed so that there's a greater emphasis on not doing immediate surgery to quote correct um, the genitalia and a greater emphasis on allowing a period of development and allowing counseling. Uh, but in other parts of the country th these ideas are still um, too new to have been adopted and in those parts of the countries there still is a push to do some kind of surgery right away. So this is, continues to change, but we don't have a national mandate for how to treat intersex. We have, that, that goes with a national healthcare system, we have a very heterogeneous healthcare system. And so it's a problem if you want to change standards of practice nationally. It's also a problem because some medical specialties have established new standards of care, particularly pediatricians, pediatric endocrinologists argue against immediate surgery, um, whereas surgeons want to do surgery. So they have not established, the, the surgical societies have not established new standards of care. So it may depend on who, sort of who dominates the treatment team when a child is born. Today, does medical science agree about prenatal sexual development or are there still points of discord? Um, I think there are points of discord, but basic anatomical events following fertilization and how they lead to uh, sexual development, development of a male body and a female body, um, I think are pretty well agreed upon. I think what's less agreed upon is, and, and the role of hormones in directing the anatomical development is, I, I think there's a great deal of agreement on that. There's still things to be learned about it. There are things we don't know um, and that are worthy of continued medical research. But I think that 
the area where there is still controversy is uh, brain development. So the development of the nervous system because it's a very common idea that hormones in the in fetal development affect brain development. Um, but there's a great deal of disagreement about how much they affect it and certainly no understanding at all about how they affect it. Uh, and in fact, there's a huge dispute about brain development. So, uh, so the basic anatomy of the genitalia um, and how that happens, I think there's pretty good agreement about. If a three years old child chooses gender, is it possible that his choice changed by the fact that the brain evolves up to the age of 25? Um, well, I, it's not clear to me that hormones are the main thing involved in deciding. Um, I think that gender identity, that is a sense of self as boy or girl, for most people is established at quite a young age. Um, but I say for most people because I think that, that for some people it's, it, it occurs over a longer period of time. But it, so for most children, gender identity, a sense of self as boy or girl, becomes clear by about three, three years of age. Um, and then there are aspects of gender expression which may continue to develop. Uh, but there may be, I mean, there may be some individuals for whom there are much later, who, later ideas develop about, about gender identity. Would you say that it's more rare that people at the age of 50 would change their orientation? Yeah, it's rare. It happens. But, I, but it's, less, it's less common. So, um, and I think in terms of sort of stability of processes, so that what are, what are the things that make gender identity a stable um, set of events uh, in one person may differ in another person. Um, but on the whole, I mean, the most common thing is for gender identity be, to become pretty stabilized at a surprisingly young age. Um, in terms of sense of self as boy or girl or a man or woman, um, gender expression has a great, varies a great deal more over the life cycle. You say that nurture takes an important role in the gender attribution. So what are the cultural changes today that motivates the, the desire of a change? Well, I think there's been um, the general political feminist movement for equality has, goes well beyond just equality in the workplace. So it's one thing to, for women to say, we want to get paid as much as men in terms of salary, but then that actually has profound implications because uh, if women are going to get paid as much as men, but then they go and have babies, right? Um, and so then you have to begin to think about how culturally you accommodate um, childbirth if you have a culture which expects to reproduce itself. Um, and then that opens up the possibility that, well, maybe not only women take care of babies, but maybe men do. That involves pushing to change traditional old, older notions of masculinity. Um, you have politi the political mo movements for LBGT, and you have same-sex couples wanting to be parents. That changes the notion of, um, of gender, because if you have uh, two women raising a child, then you don't have a father and a mother, you have two mothers, or two men, you have two fathers. Um, but their roles may be very different, their gender expressions may be very different. Um, and, what, and there may be one father who stays home with the baby more, and the other father who goes to work and earns the money for the family. So. Um, so the minute you make what seems like a simple demand, pay men and women the same, and that began 
in the 19, the most recent version of that began in the 1970s in the United States with the feminist movement. But that had such profound implications um, for uh, all the rest of culture and then for what gets defined as masculine and what gets defined as feminine.